Everyone pretend podcasting isn't boring. Today in Around the Question, is the U.S. woke military a bad thing? A review of the implementation of woke culture by the U.S. military. But first remember, Anchor is the easiest way to make a podcast. It is free, has everything you need to record and edit audio using your smartphone or computer. You can even make money through ads. With one click, your content goes to Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and many other platforms. So download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm. That is A-N-C-H-O-R dot F-M and start today. Now, let's turn around to our chat. Two thousand twenty one brought a new mentality to the US military. What can be described as a woke culture has, in a way, taken over. Wokeness is kind of hard to describe and it is even harder to dissociate from political ideologies. Although it has its roots in a sense of awareness about racial prejudice, discrimination and social inequality, now it is something that you can identify when you see it but you cannot quite explain it. Social justice warriors and political correctness are just some of its representations. Now, in the case of the military, such tendency translated, among other things, into an advertisement campaign with a series of videos named The Calling. These short videos present five military personnel, Jennifer, Ricky, Janine, Emma, and David each of them coming from a minority group and representing their stories focusing on feelings, emotions, and internal struggles, in a certain way humanizing the army and pushing for shattering stereotypes. The ads were clearly different from previous campaigns such as What is Your Warrior, focused on strength and action with an animation that looked a lot more like a video game, probably targeting gamers. For some, this walk culture, especially in the military, is detrimental to the image and performance of the troops. Fox anchor Tucker Carlson talked strongly against this new policy. He was particularly outspoken about Emma's story, a U.S. Army corporal that is the daughter of a lesbian couple and describes how she marched for equality, her mom's struggles, and how they were powerful role models. Tucker also picked up another news about how the military is implementing improved maternity flying suits, as well as the possibility of lowering the physical standards of the admission exams in some of the military branches. For the commentator, inclusion has no place in the military, and it should be a position for the strongest soldiers. Although people such as Mr. Carlson are not the majority, he represents a group that at least believes that the emphasis of the recruitment process should not be wokeness or diversity, but strength. Tucker also expressed that rival countries such as China probably were laughing about the US Army new wokeness mentality. Now, is it possible that China is mocking the US? Most likely, especially when they are betting in the opposite direction. At the beginning of 2021, the BBC reported that the Ministry of Education in China suggested that Chinese men had become too feminine and told schools they must cultivate students' masculinity. But the reality is that the United States is not China. The political and social approach is different, and Carlson's comparison is simply absurd for two reasons. Number one, he and many like him have criticized China and any involvement between the US and China. So if China is so bad, why do they want the US to follow the same rules? And number two, China is an authoritarian regime and only an authoritarian regime could be able to push their society to where they are not naturally going. They can socially engineer their military representing not their population, but their state. It is precisely China's lack of freedom, the one that Carlson criticized so much, the one that allows them to force a more masculine society by design. Is it effective? 
probably, particularly when you consider what has happened in the realms of technology and manufacturing, where the competition has been mainly lost by the United States. Funny examples about it can be found in the book AI Superpowers, in which Kei Fu Lin expressed how dedicated the Chinese programmers are in comparison to the Americans, and in the Netflix documentary American Factory, in which the US workers are outperformed by their Asian counterparts in every way. But in a free country, the military is formed by the individuals inside the community that get into the army by choice and voluntary, meaning that they have some other options, but they choose to be soldiers. Hence, if a community is full of Christians or vegans, or in this case, woke people, chances are the military will be equally full of them. Since the Joe Biden election, there is this strange idea that the president is imposing his wokeness into the armed forces, when actually it is quite the opposite. Joe Biden is responding to the demographics in his country to make the army appealing to them. It is almost like Biden's opposers do not realize the size of the recruitment problem. The army reflects the society, and the society is represented by the Congress and, at least in theory, the Congress embodies the will of the people they represent. So, any decision that is applied to the military needs to represent what the majority wants. Otherwise, in the next elections, the politicians will pay the price. So, how is the U.S. society? Well, recent studies have found that teenagers lack self-confidence, and the Institute of Politics of Harvard's Kennedy School found that more than half of the young Americans are going through an extended period of feeling down, depressed, or hopeless. 28% have had thoughts that they would be better off dead or hurting themselves in some way. So, if the military is betting for emotional and inner strength, it is because the US population is softer and they have more internal problems rather than external ones. The Center for American Progress made a study about the political ideology of the millennial generation in 2009, in which 44% of the survey self-identified as progressive or liberal, 28 as conservative or libertarian, and 27 as moderate or other. So, if the army wants soldiers, they need to look progressive and liberal. A 2018 study done by MTV AP NORC, comparing the political views of young people and their parents' generation, showed that young people criticize the government's handling of climate change, gun control, racism, immigration, cost of education, unfairness in police and justice systems, abortion, and income inequality. So, if the military wants soldiers, again, such topics need to be addressed. And how the military needs to adapt to the country's society is not only about psychological, social, or political factors. It is also about physical skills. A good example of it is that Americans, well, Americans are fat. According to the Associated Press article, Are the U.S. Troops Too Fat to Fight?, 20% of all male recruits and 40% of female recruits are too heavy to enter the military ranks. The recruits must lost weight so they can barely pass the minimum standards in both the weight measurements as well as the physical fitness test. Considering that the military community has always been a cross-section of society, for good or bad, seems like the military knows they need to change to have soldiers. General Mark Milley, chairman of Joint Chiefs of Staff, expressed it simple and clear. The military is formed by the people. So, as famous conservative Ben Shapiro used to say, facts don't care about your feelings, right? And the fact is that the US Army has shrunk considerably during the last decade. It is 7,000 members short of its target of 82,000 soldiers. Hence, if the young are woke, the military must wake up or dry out. It is a concept that capitalists such as Ben Shapiro or Tucker Carlson should understand, offer and demand. The military wants to recruit and to be able to sell that idea, they need to have something that the population wants and young people want to be woke. The CIA is going through the same transformation since they are having problems finding new people. So they are going the same route of diversity and inclusion, offer and demand. The ads targeting minorities make a lot of sense when you consider the projections of the US demographic 
that suggest that by 2045, whites will be a minority with 49% of the population if you stack up all the other races, Hispanic, Asian, Black, multiracial, etc. That is why this effect is not only in the military, but every aspect of the US. It is not a coincidence that Marlboro has the plan to stop selling cigarettes or that Burger King and McDonald's are testing vegan meat. You must adapt to the market. Again, in a free country, you cannot force citizens to be one way. The military feeds on citizens, so to survive, they need to offer something attractive to the citizens. And there is a final argument against the opposition of wokeness in the US military, probably the best one. Warfare is and will be fought with technology. Recently, Ben Shapiro criticized the walk mentality in Lockheed Martin Corporation, one of the biggest military companies. They implemented training to their workforce to be more walk. Shapiro considers that they do it to comply with Biden's agenda, which may be partially true, but also is because when we talk about the future of military companies such as Lockheed Martin, they will need more tech-savvy staff than anything else. And usually, programmers and developers are more liberal and, more important, they have all their places in which they can work, such as Google, Twitter, and Facebook, that at least in appearance are more woke. The military-industrial complex understands that it is okay to provide maternity flying suits not only for the prison reasons, but because pilots will soon be a thing of the past. In 2020, during the Air Warfare Symposium, inventor Elon Musk was interviewed about the future of the Air Force, and Musk's short answer was, the fighter jet era has passed. So, if you believe that physical strength is going to be relevant in modern warfare, you're just wrong. We're not in a trencher war anymore. A pregnant woman is as lethal as a ripped man when it comes to piloting drones. And moreover, this August 2021, Human Rights Watch called for a global treaty on killer robots ahead of a Geneva Convention between 50 countries whose main topic was autonomous weapons. The future will not be fought by humans. Whether it's best or not to have a walk army, the reality is that there is little the military heads can do about it, other than going with the flow. Yes, opposite countries may laugh about it, but the US needs to play with the hand it has, focus on the developing of technology to stay ahead, and pray for the best. Improved, more efficient drones will be better than soldiers with more muscles. Attracting geeks to the military is the best bet they could do now. This does not mean that the tendency will remain forever. Maybe the next generation of tech-savvy recruits will be different from today. We may see the return of a more manly military, particularly because youngsters tend to protest what their parents represent. So if you are a walk parent, chances are your kid will rebel against that. It is also true that a walk mentality could have detrimental, unpredictable consequences in a world where not all the countries are walking the same path. A military too sensitive could alter the decision-making too, becoming soft and vulnerable against the more ruthless militia. Additionally, one thing is to be appealing to your population and another is to indoctrinate your soldiers. Tom Cotton, a US Republican senator, for example, complained about military classes focused on white supremacy, systemic racism, or police brutality. Another side effect has been the expulsion of people that just don't think like that, such as the case reported by the Washington Post about the commander of the Space Force unit that was fired after accusing the military of pushing an agenda rooted in Marxism. But in any case, for now, complainers need to suck it up, or as the UFC fighter Conor McGregor once said, they are bitching and moaning and hating on it. They don't have to love it. They can even hate it. But they will be forced to accept it.
Well, I hope you liked the episode of today and let me know if you want to hear more content like this one. Please leave any question you have about any episode or topic and I will get back to you as soon as possible. For more interviews, analysis and stories, subscribe to my podcast. You can listen to it on all platforms including Spotify, Google and Apple Podcast and of course Anchor. Watch videos about my travels on my YouTube channel and follow me on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. In all of them as Juan Around. You can also support me on my Patreon and buy me a coffee account, both as Juan Around. All links on the description. Like, share and subscribe and see you around. Your booze mean nothing. I've seen what makes you cheer.